Welcome back to another Bellator fight prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting some of the main car fights for Bellator 225, Mitrion versus Karatanov 2. So without further ado, let's get to the first fight that I'll be predicting on the main card. So in our first fight, we have in the heavyweight division, Tyrell Fortune versus Rudy um, Schaefer, Schaefer Roth or whatever his name is. But um, looking at this fight, I'm going to call him Rudy. I'm, I'm really not saying that last name. But basically, I think Fortune is just better in every area. Um, Rudy might be an inch taller, might weigh a little bit more, but Tyrell Fortune is the much better wrestler. His striking is coming on along well. And I think really more than this striking and this this is an MMA fight, I think Fortune just puts it together well. He might not be able to be that solid striker, this pure striker, but he has been knocking some folks out just off his striking. But we all know what he is as a wrestler, and that's where his confidence comes from is in his wrestling. So if he ever needs to go back to that or needs it, he has that in his back pocket. So I feel like that's the more important thing, more so than trying to say, oh, he's a striker. He can strike with this guy if he needs to and do what he needs to. I think more so the fact that he can wrestle him at any point in this fight is his strongest um, attribute or his bet, his ticket to victory at all times. Even if he might not use it, the fact that he has it is going to be a big factor because it's going to be a threat that Rudy has to respect at all times. I think Fortune, like I said, just better everywhere. I think he could already going to have his respect in the wrestling. He's going to let his hands go. And if he needs to, he's going to use his wrestling. I think he just better everywhere and has that in his pocket if needed. So... I just think Tyro Fortune controls him through this fight, pieces him up, picks him apart, and wears him out in the first two rounds. I think he puts him way in the, late in the th like in the mid stage of the third round. So in this fight, I got Tyrell Fortune via third round TKO. Now onto our next fight, we have a catchweight fight. It's not a one seventy fight. Well, I was like one seventy five is a weird weight cut. Why there even a catchweight at one seventy five? It was in Rickles at one fifty five or at one point. I don't know, but. Whatever case is a catch catch weight one seventy five fight, and that's all we need to know. So we got David Rickles versus Yaroslav Almosov. I'm I'm saying his name wrong, but I'm, I'm gonna call him Yaroslav Almosov. So yeah, that's what I'm saying his name is. But uh, look at this fight. He got undefeated twenty one. I mean not twenty one year, but twenty one and zero. Um, Yar Yaroslav Almosov versus the Caveman Rickles. So looking at this fight, I had to see like Dave Rickles is a very underrated um, vet. A lot of people write him off, especially as he lost to MVP. Talking about oh he just can and MVP just beats can, but Rickles is a very solid vet. I mean solid vet, and he can hold more than hold his own in the UFC. I'm not saying he'd be a stud in the UFC, but I'm saying he can certainly get some wins over some solid fighters in the UFC. Definitely some experience in the grappling, definitely some power in his hands, and he's no slouch in really any area of the game. He's a he's a scrappy game veteran, and he's technical at, as well. He, he, that's very slept on. We see him going there with some solid wrestlers, some solid grapplers, and be able to pick up wins over there. And we look at who he lost. He really only lost to a lot of the best fighters. He didn't lose to really no cans in his MMA career. With like the older Pitbull brother, Michael Chandler, twice. Uh, Melvin Glar, which was like, a, he tested positive after the fight in like MVP. So he really hasn't lost to too many bad people. But look at this fight. I think Yaroslav, I mean, yeah, Yaroslav is just the much better grappler, in my opinion. Like with his youth, his freshness, I think he'll be able to control Rickles. I think it, in this fight, he'll have the clear grappling advantage, or at least the advantage of who can take the fight to the ground. And that will carry a lot of confidence, give him a lot of confidence that I can strike, I can mix it up well, and if I need to, I can take it to the ground at just about any time I feel like. I'm not saying he's going to have 100% takedown accuracy, but he'll have pretty much a very favorable accuracy if he goes for takedowns, like probably over 50% if he goes for takedowns over Rickles, whereas Rickles will struggle to probably even secure any successful takedowns against him. On feet, Rickles will have some power, but I think the length and how fluid Yaroslav striking will give him some advantage in that area and an ability to mix it up with the takedowns. It's going to really cause Rickles a lot of problems, but Rickles is tough. He's a veteran. He's going to make a game fight. But I just think as the fight progresses on, Yaroslav is going to find his timing for his strikes, his timing for his takedowns. And when he gets into his groove, I just think he's going to be able to just really outclass Rickles in a way. I'm not saying he's that much better, but once he gets into the groove, he'll just show you why he's the better fighter. And I, I think he um, stops Rickles late in the third. So in this fight, I got Yaroslav Amosov via third round TKO. Now to our next fight, we have, well, we have our main event, actually. So, not our main, we have our co-main event. We have Vitaly, in the heavyweight division, Vitaly Minikov versus Javi Ayala. So, looking at this fight, you got the former Bellator heavyweight champion versus Javi Ayala. Ayala not, hasn't really had no consistent up and, I mean, no consistent record where he's on a winning streak and really showing that he's some star. He has some big wins here and there. And then he had a lot of da ups, I mean downs, but a lot of but some big wins sprinkled in between with a record of eleven and seven, coming off a win over Frank Mir. In which he was losing then Frank Mir, I don't know what maybe he just got old mid a fight or whatever, but the case is he beat Frankie Mir, TKO'd him. I think Frank Mir what tapped against the cage he was in on the ground. He wasn't like knocked out. He was against the cage, he took some shots and like 
I just tapped out in the clinch. So it was like a weird end to that fight. But um, yeah, look at this fight. Just get to the point. Vitaly Minikov is definitely a far better grappler than Javier Ayala. Ayala's grappling is very, needs a lot of work. That's all I got to say. Doesn't have the best takedown defense. Doesn't have the best grappling defense. And overall, his style, he's just kind of scrappy. He's not, not the most technique, but very scrappy. Solid chin. And some under some solid power. And he's actually kind of very fluid on the feet. He might not be the most technical striking, but he's very fluid. Can move much more than you expect. Like a 264-pound fighter to move. Move very like solid solid chin. Throw some strikes. Got some power. But Vitaly Minikov, not as fluid as um, Ayala. Like is bounce, bouncing around as him. But um, I think much more technical striker than on the ground. is just a huge advantage. I think at any point in this fight, Vitaly Minikov can take this fight down. Ground to pound him or submit him or both. I think Ayala will make it interesting trying to keep him on feet, trying to use his foot movement, trying to use, you know, just make it complicated for Vitaly Minikov to get into his game. But I think Vitaly Minikov eventually finds his range, get out of that, um, you know, gets Ayala out of his groove, get him on the ground, ground and pound him, and submit him. I think the first round is kind of a filling out process. I think in the second round he starts to apply pressure, cut him off, land big shots, go for the takedown, get him to the ground, ground and pound, and submit him. Now, so in this fight, I have Vitaly Minikov via second round submission. Now to our main event we have in the heavyweight division, a rematch of a fight that didn't even really have a conclusion. Matt Mitrione versus Sergey Caratano. This really should be Mitrione versus Caratano um, 1.2 or something like that. Because that first fight was a no contest due to a nut kicking like with the first minute of the fight. So um, a very wild fight. Or very, well not even wild, but just a very nothing fight. Nothing happened at all. But I think the same still applies in this fighting. Mitrione is a solid fighter. I think his best advantage is like to, to stay on his feet is obvious. He's another heavyweight that's even though he's very big, he's very athletic. He can move. He got some power. He, he could jump around the whole fight and land big shots and jump in and like jump in and jump out with these big shots or keep you at the end of his range and land big shots. Athletic. Um, been at the game for a minute now. And you got Suri Karatanov who's been at the game forever, like pride days. I don't know, he probably, it feels like he's been in the game for 20 years. He probably has. If he hasn't, it, he's damn near close to being in the game for like, I'm not, not going to say 20 years, that's probably too much, but definitely probably close to 15, well, I don't know. It is damn near 20 years, so whatever the case is. Been around the game forever. Sergey, Sergey Karatanov, solid striking, was even competed at the highest levels of kickboxing. Was a sample practitioner, so he had those submission games, he has that grappling game. And I just feel like Sergey Karatanov is the more, more decorated striker, the more um, experienced fighter. And I feel like he could beat Matt Richard on the feet. You know, Matt Richard, like I said, he'll have that speed advantage. He'll be able to jump around and do all that stuff. I think Sergey Caratano will eventually be able to catch him, slow him down, work to his body, then come up top, take away from those wheels of Matt Richard on. Like I said, early on, Matt Richard is going to be dangerous, but as the fight starts to fill out and it becomes more about the technique of the fighters and the skills and experience, that's all Sergey Caratano. And I think at any point, if he really wants to mix in his grappling, he can do that against Matt Richard, who's always had kind of questionable takedown defense and even the more questionable grappling defense. So if he gets taken down on his back, we don't really expect too much from his submission defense. Well, he might be able to survive, but as far as get up to back to his feet from getting taken down by such a high-level grappler like Sergey Karatanov, especially with the power he has and especially after he starts to wear on you and starts to land those clean shots and to drain from you, I think he's not going to be in a very good position. So I think in the first round, kind of a fill-out round, maybe Marichon wins that one, but as the fight goes down like in the second or third, I think Sergey Car- I mean, Karatanov starts to touch him more. Starts to make Matt Mitrione feel his power. Then he mixes in the grappling. Starts to work him in the ground. And I actually don't think he stops Matt Mitrione in this fight. I think he um, starts to just wear on him and he starts to break him down in this fight. I think Matt Mitrione will be tough enough to kind of avoid getting TKO. He might get hurt at several times in this fight. He might get put in some questionable positions. I mean, some dangerous positions or some bad positions. But I think he's able to make it to a decision in this fight, especially only being a three-round fight. But I think Sergey Caritano is like, fills out that first round and the second and third round until he starts to... Um, Show his experience and shows his skills and show that he's the more well-rounded MMA fighter and the more experienced fighter. This breaks him down on the feet and on the ground to a pretty clear-cut decision. So in this fight, I got Sergey Karatanov via decision. And that concludes my fight predictions for the main card of you, I mean, uh, Bellator 225, Mitrion versus Karatanov 2. And as always, thanks for watching.